Good day everyone and I am glad to be back for our second discussion. And this day we're talking about the nutritional value and components of eggs. Again, I am your subject teacher. I am Mom Jeannie G. Dachon. And for this afternoon or for this day, we will be talking more about nutritive value as well as the egg structure. Eggs are a favorite part of everyone's breakfast, right? Eggs are an important source of protein, essential vitamins and minerals, and can make a significant contribution to a healthy diet. Nutritional requirements can vary considerably between men and women and children and can also vary individuals from time to time. Again, for this day, we're talking about the nutritional value and components of eggs. And for our lesson objectives for this day, again, at the end of the lesson, you are expected to, for your first, give the definition and characteristics of eggs. What do you know about eggs? And cite the nutritive value and components of eggs, the nutrient content that we can get from eggs, and as well as enumerate the methods of determining freshness of eggs. We will be talking about the different methods on how we are going to determine the freshness of eggs. Now, before we begin to our discussion, let's have this activity wherein there is a basket of eggs with different characteristics. The question is, how will you determine if the eggs are fresh? So, determine each characteristic whether they are fresh or not. I'm going to give you five minutes at least for you to determine the different characteristics. So, what are the different characteristics of eggs in the basket? We have a regular air cell, this one. We have a centered yolk, clean shell, water white, sinks in water, or is it Dirty shell, rough shell, small yolk, round yolk, firm yolk, and floats in water as well as large air cell. Again, all you have to do is to determine whether they are fresh or not. Now, for the definition and characteristics of eggs. Eggs are poultry products from chickens, ducks, and quails that are eaten as food. Unclassified egg refers to chicken eggs since they are the most widely consumed in the country and in other countries. Duck egg is the second most popular sold in the form of salted eggs or itlog na maalat. Balut or penoy. Quail eggs are as equally popular as duck eggs. They are boiled, rolled in butter, then deep fried. They are popular street food for all persons across ages and social groups. They are also used as major ingredient in popular dishes like chop suey, embotido, bird's nest soup, shrimp and quail eggs, as well as in vegetable salad. So those are eggs and as we go along on our discussion, we will be learning more about eggs. Let us now proceed on how eggs are being graded. Based on the standards set by the Bureau of Product Standards Philippines, Eggs are graded according to, for the first, it's all about the color. Either white, brown, or mixed. The question is, why are chicken eggs 
different colors or it has a different color. Contrary to popular belief, a brown chicken egg is not healthier than a white chicken egg. Remember that. Do the different colors impact the flavor or the health value of the eggs? Other than the appearance, there are no major differences between eggs from different breeds of chickens. The color of eggshells and egg yolks varies with the breed of hen and the food they eat. But this makes no difference to the food value. Another standard set by Bureau of Product Standards Philippines, eggs are graded according to weight. Sale of eggs is based on the size of the egg, which is based on weight in grams. So here is the table wherein it has the different grams or it has the different weight per sizes. So what are the sizes of eggs? We have peewee, small medium, large, extra large, and jumbo. And their average weight per egg in ounces or in grams. So, it is written there. Eggs are sized by weight. Eggs in the same carton may appear to be different sizes, but their weight will be within a similar range. The following minimum weights are used to classify eggs into different sizes. Another standard is the quality. Eggs are based on some characteristics of the shell, egg white, egg yolk, and air cell. The color and the weight of the eggs are also considered. It is not only the appearance of the shell that is graded. But, the contents are also considered. The eggs pass in front of a special bright light so that the contents of the eggs can be seen. Egg quality has two general components. We have the shell quality or the exterior quality and interior egg quality. Interior egg quality has direct bearing on the functional properties of eggs, while shell qualities has direct influence on microbiological quality. So that is for the quality of eggs. Let us now move on for the different grades of eggs. For the first one, we have the double A grade. The yolk is firm and the area covered by the white is, is small. There is a large proportion of thick white to thin white. Double A grades, when broken, have only a small amount of spread and the yolk will be in the center of the white. The white is thick and stands high. The caleza is prominent in the white. The yolk is firm, round, and high. They are suitable for any type of use. They are definitely preferred for poaching, frying, and cooking in the shell. So that is for double A grade. For A grade or grade A, the yolk is round and upstanding. The thick white is large in proportion to the thin white and stands fairly well around the yolk. Grade A eggs, when broken, have a moderate amount of spread. The white is reasonably thick and stands fairly high. The caleza are prominent in the white and the yolk is firm and stands fairly high. This is the most commonly used grade of egg and the same is suitable for all types of use. So, for grade A. Another grade is grade B. The yolk is flattened just like what you have seen in the picture and there is about 
as much as more thin white as thick white. Great B eggs, when broken, spread greatly, having only a small amount of thick white. The white in general appear weak and watery. The calaisa are small or completely absent and the yolk is flat and bored. This grade of eggs are normally purchased already broken in a variety of forms. They are suitable for scrambling or baking and as an ingredient with other foods and shouldn't be used when the egg is used to provide a high level of structure in the food item. So that is grade B. And for our last grade, it's grade C. The eggs have a crack and or stained shell or a flattened yolk or it has a watery white. For this kind of grade, these eggs are only used in the production of processed egg products. We're now moving on for the different ways on how we determine the freshness of eggs. Almost everyone has been faced with this problem. You reach into the fridge for an egg but can't remember how long they have been sitting there. It's true that over time, an egg's quality begins to decline as the air packet inside gets larger and the whites get thinner. However, an egg only goes bad when it starts to decompose because of bacteria or mold. In fact, your eggs may be perfectly good to eat for many more weeks. When in doubt, there are several methods you can use to determine if your eggs are good or bad. Let's now have the first method which is gross examination so fresh eggs have rough dull looking shells do you know how to tell if an egg is fresh eggs that have gone bad will give off unmistakable smell regardless of whether they are raw or cooked if you can already tell while the egg is in the shell Crack the egg onto a clean plate or bowl and give it a sniff. If anything smells off, toss the egg and wash the bowl or plate with hot soapy water before using again. If things smell normal, meaning there is no odor at all, that is a good sign that the egg is still safe to use. In addition to your nose, your eyes are valuable tool for telling whether an egg is good or bad. While the egg is still in its shell, check that the shell is not cracked, slimy, or powdery. Sliminess or cracks can indicate the presence of bacteria while a powdery appearance on the shell may indicate mold so that is for gross examination method another method is candling hold the egg against the light candling is the process of holding a strong light above or below the egg to observe the embryo a candling lamp consists of a strong electric bulb covered by a plastic or aluminum container that has a handle and an aperture. The egg is placed against this aperture and illuminated by the light. So that's how candling works in determining the freshness of eggs. For our next method is we're going to perform a float test. The float test is one of the most popular methods for checking whether an egg is good or bad. 
This is also a common method for determining the age of a fertilized egg that is developing into a chick. To perform the float test, gently set your egg into a bowl or bucket of water. If the egg sinks, it is fresh. If it tilts upwards or even floats, it is old. This is because as an egg ages, the small air packet inside it grows larger as water is released and replaced by air. If the air packet becomes large enough, the egg may float. While this method may tell you whether an egg is fresh or old, it doesn't tell you whether an egg is good or bad. That is how to perform a float test. Let us now move on to one of the easiest way or easiest method on how to determine the freshness of egg. And that is by means of shaking. Fresh eggs do not rattle noticeably, while a stale one rattles easily. Mental flaws explain that if you shake a fresh egg, you won't hear anything. If you hear liquid slushing around, your egg is old. This is because older eggs have absorbed more air, allowing the white to move around inside the egg. So that is a shaking method. And for our last method in determining the freshness of eggs, we have breaking. Fresh eggs have a clear, thick, firm, and gelatinous egg white. The yolk is well-rounded, high at mid-center, and does not break easily. The yolk is small and rounded and stands high in a thick, gel-like egg white, which tends to stay compact rather than spread out over a wide area. As eggs age, the yolk absorbs water from the white and becomes larger and flatter. The thick egg white becomes thin and runny. By this time, the egg might also have developed a stale odor and flavor. So those are the different methods on how we can determine the freshness of eggs. Did you know that egg is indeed one of nature's complete food? A study published in Pediatrics Magazine has suggested that giving young children just one egg a day for six months alongside a diet with reduced sugar-sweetened foods may help them achieve a healthy height and prevent stunting. So, we're going to discuss all about nutritive value of eggs. Eggs are a rich source of complete protein, and similar to the quality of protein present in meat, fish, and poultry. Eggs are not only rich in protein, but also a good source of vitamins except for vitamin C or ascorbic acid. They are also rich in iron, phosphorus, and other trace minerals. The egg yolk is rich source of iron, vitamin A, and as well as cholesterol. While the egg white contains the protein and the significant quality of riboflavin, eggs like milk are also sources of a well-balanced nutrients that they are considered an almost complete food for people of all ages. So that is the reason why egg is considered as almost complete food. After knowing the needed tools and equipment needed in the preparation of egg dishes, and on how to clean and sanitize them after its use, the next consideration is to know 
what makes up an egg and appreciate other things about egg. We normally distinguish three parts of an egg. The shell, the egg white, and the egg yolk. But a closer scrutiny reveals a much more detailed structure of an egg. And that is what we're going to talk about, the egg structure. For our first structure is shell. The egg's outer covering, the shell accounts for about 9-12% to of its total weight depending on egg size. The shell has an outer coating called the bloom or cuticle. The cuticle somewhat seals the pores and is useful in reducing moisture losses and in preventing bacterial penetration of the eggshell. The eggshell has more than 7,000 tiny pores that allow oxygen to pass into the egg and carbon dioxide to escape. The shell is the egg's first line of defense against bacterial contamination. Another structure is we have the air cell. This is the empty space between the white and shell at the large end of the egg, which is barely existent in newly laid egg. The air cell located between the inner and outer membranes at the large end of the egg holds oxygen for the chick to breathe. And for another part is what we call the albumin. The albumin or the egg white accounts for most of an egg's liquid weight for about 67%. Cushions the egg yolk floating within it and it is the main source of protein and water embryo. An albumin, it is a clear thin liquid that surrounds the vitellin membrane. It helps provide Another layer of protection and protein for growing embryo. An inner thick albumin, it is the inner thick white or the calyxiferous layer, which is a dense, matted, fibrous capsule of albumin around the membrane located nearest the yolk. While the embryo is growing, the shell membrane surround and contain the white or albumin of the egg. The albumin provides the liquid medium in which the embryo develops. And it is also contains a large amount of the protein necessary for proper development. And for our outer thin albumin, it is a narrow fluid layer next to the shell membrane. It is the watery part of the egg white which is located farthest from the yolk. The outer thin white, it is a narrow fluid layer next to the shell membrane. The thin albumin is the second layer from the shell and spreads around the thick white of the egg. Another part is the word chalice or other pronounce it as caleza. This is the cords on two sides of the yolk that keep the yolk floating in the center of the albumin. This stringy white substance attached to the yolk of most eggs is called the chalice or caleza. It is actually a sign that your egg is fresh and safe to eat. The chalice acts as an anchor to keep the yolk centered in the middle of the egg rather than settling on one side. So that is chalice or caleza. Another part is germinal disc. 
The germinal disc is the white spot on the yolk. This is where the female's genetic material is found. A germinal disc is a flattened dislike region of cells from which the embryo begins to develop in the fertilized ovum of many vertebrate species. Germinal disc is also called sometimes blastodisc or embryonic disc. The germinal disc is barely noticeable as a slight depression on the surface of the yolk. When the egg is fertilized, sperm enter by way of the germinal disc, travel to the center, and a chick embryo starts to form. Since stable eggs are not fertilized, this is not as easy to recognize as when the egg is fertilized. Another part is what we call membrane or membranes. Egg has two membranes. These two membranes, the inner and outer, are just inside the shell surrounding the albumin. The two membranes provide an efficient defense against bacterial invasion and are made partly of keratin. The outer membrane sticks to the eggshell while the inner shell membrane separates from the outer shell membrane to form the air cell. The inner and outer membranes Found between the eggshell and the egg white, it keeps the bacteria from entering the egg and it helps to slow evaporation of moisture from the egg. Another part is the yolk. The yolk or the yellow to yellow orange portion makes up about 33% of the liquid weight of the egg. The egg yolk is formed in the ovary. The yolk provides food for the embryo. It is made up of fats, carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. For the last part, we have vitalin or the yolk membrane. The vitalin membrane is the covering that protects the yolk from breaking. The vitalin membrane is weakest at the germinal disc and tends to become more fragile as the egg ages. Every cook has experienced that the yolk of eggs that is no longer fresh easily breaks. Vitalin or yolk membrane prevents mixing of the yolk and egg white and it forms the last barrier to microbial infection. Vitalin membrane strength and integrity is essential for a good quality egg in terms of reproduction, processing, and baking. The yolk membrane it is the clear casing that encloses the egg yolk. Before we proceed to the last part of our discussion, let's have first review the egg structure. Let's begin with the shell. So this is the egg's outer covering. Then we have the air cell, the empty space between the white and the shell. The egg white, or what we call the albumin, composed of thick and thin albumin. For outer thin albumin, it is a narrow fluid layer next to the shell membrane. And then for the inner thick albumin, it is the inner thick white or the calciferous layer. Then we also have the chalice or caliza, this one. These are twisted in opposite directions and serve to keep the yolk centered. This is the germinal disc, a small circular white spot on the surface of the yolk is where the sperm enters the egg. And then we also have the shell membranes. 
the inner and outer membrane. These two membranes, the inner and outer, are just inside the shell surrounding the albumin. And then we also have the yolk. The yellow or the yellow to yellow orange portion makes up about 33% of the liquid weight of the egg. And then finally, the yolk or the vitalin membrane, it is the covering that protects the yolk from breaking. So that makes up an egg and these are the egg structure. And for our last topic, these are the market forms of eggs. There are four market forms of eggs, namely fresh, dried, frozen, and preserved. Eggs are sold in different market forms. Producers may be sold their eggs directly from the farm. So let us discuss the different market forms of eggs. Okay, for our first market forms, we have the fresh eggs. Buy fresh eggs according to weight and signs of freshness. Determine freshness as the length of time of its storage. Fresh eggs or shell eggs may be purchased individually by dozen or in trays with 36 pieces. We can use gross examination or shaking method in buying fresh eggs. Second market forms is frozen eggs. These are used in bakery products. They come in containers as egg whites, egg yolks, or whole eggs. Frozen eggs are made of high-quality fresh eggs. They come in the form of whole eggs with extra yolks and whites. Frozen eggs are pasteurized and must be thawed before use. Next market forms are dried eggs. These are known as whole egg solids or egg white only. Some companies market a frozen egg mixed for omelettes, scrambled, french toast, and so on. Dried eggs are used primarily as ingredients in food industry. They are not commonly sold directly to consumers. Dried eggs are seldom used. Their whites are used for preparing meringue. And for the last market forms, we have the preserved eggs. Examples of these eggs are century eggs, pickled eggs, and salted eggs. This is the simplest method to preserve an egg is to treat it with salt. Salt draws water out of bacteria and molds, which prevents their growth. The Chinese salted duck egg is made by immersing duck eggs in brine or coating them individually with a piece of salt, mud, or clay. So those are the different market forms of eggs. We have fresh eggs, frozen, dried, or preserved eggs. And now that we are done with our discussion, we're now moving on with our activities. So get your module and start answering your activities. And these activities are even uploaded in our Schoology. So these are the sets of activities that you need to answer. For activity 2, is it new or is it old? You're going to identify the following characteristics of eggs. Write new if the characteristic is fresh and write old if not. So write your answer on the space provided. For activity 3, true or false. Write true if the statement is correct and false if not. So same direction, write your answer on the space provided. And 
for our deepened activity, there are some activities that requires output. For activity 4, so determining freshness. You're going to buy samples of fresh eggs and not so fresh chicken eggs. You're going to test the eggs using the different methods of determining the freshness of eggs. So you're going to write down your findings in short band paper. For activity number five, what's inside an egg? For the direction, take a picture of a cracked egg. Label and explain all the parts and its functions. So you're going to print your output in short band paper. Still part of our deepen activity, activity number six, which is called minute paper. So I'm going to give you the link that you need to watch in the YouTube. And I have sets of questions that you need to answer. So that is activity number six, minute paper. For the last part of the activity is what I have learned. Part of the activity, what I have learned. You're going to check the appropriate column. So either yes or no. I can discuss the nutritional value of the egg. I can identify egg structure. I can identify the market forms of eggs. I can determine if the eggs is fresh or stale. So these are the learning objectives that we discussed a while ago. And again, I'm hoping that your answers are all yes. If your answers are all yes, you may now go on with the assessment. And again, if some of your answers are no, read and study the lesson again. And this is it. If there is no more question, you may now take your assessment. But still, if you have questions, you may message me in our Schoology through email, through Facebook, or Messenger. I hope you learned something today. Stay safe and God bless.